Hello, and welcome to the Loveology Podcast, where we talk about love and life with laughter. I'm Ashley. And I'm Jason. He's the carefree one. She's the serious one. And, and we're, we're married. married. We have been since 2012, and we like to think of ourselves as a couple of loveologists. Not because we are the experts, but because we just love love. We enjoy studying and talking about it, so we thought, let's just start a podcast. A place where we can share what we have learned about love, relationships, and marriage. You can share what you've learned, and we can all grow together. So here we are. Are you ready? Let's get started. What's up, everybody? This is the Love Ology Podcast. We coming in yet again, my friends. How y'all doing, baby girl? What's up, love? I see you trying to rhyme. I don't know. <laughs> well, this is what I naturally do. <laughs> coming in yet again. You know, I'm I'm cold with the flow. That's just what I do sometimes. You hear me? Yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> What's we hope up? you had a happy Fourth of July. Hope oh, you, you asked me how I was doing. Yeah, I did ask you how you was doing. I'm good. Okay. I mean, you live with me, so you know. I just still I want to ask. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So did you did you enjoy your weekend? I did. You know, I, did. I just so happened to have some some meat and and all that good stuff went to the store and uh Yeah, Jason fired up the grill. He put just put the grill together with some wood it. this time. It was it was I could definitely tell the difference, you guys. With hickory. Yes, instead of charcoal, he used wood and I was like, Oh my gosh, the burgers were so good. Mm, you didn't give me a kiss yesterday. What yes I did. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so, yeah, so Definitely, uh, yes, if you live in America. <laughs> we mm-hmm. hope that you had a good 4th of July. Um, and if you don't live in America. Hope you had a great weekend. Yes, like uh, our German uh, German listener. Hey, <laughs> shout out to you guys. We see y'all. We see y'all over there in Germany. We appreciate the love. We on the charts yes. for Germany. And uh, we appreciate it, man. Ireland, you know, shout out to Ireland. We want to give y'all some shout outs as well. England, Canada, Mexico, right? Yes. This Eric, goes on and on. Man, appreciate y'all. Loveology podcast worldwide. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> yes. So, babe, 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 mm-hmm. what's up? What are we talking about today? Well, I, I just want to take a moment really quick before we jump into the episode to talk about the release of Promised Land. Okay, release. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. a little yes. bit. Um, if you listen to us on a regular basis, then you've been noticing that we've been releasing um, Black Lives Matter episodes. Mm-hmm. And, on, um, and so this is just what we can do. We're trying to do something to help keep this movement going and keep the conversation going around it. And so we... Um, you know, on the previous episode, we talked about how we were going to release my thesis film, <laughs> which was about black farmers. And I just wanted to say, you know, we had a good release and um, we released it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And now we have it's only been up for three days and we have close to 800 views. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to everybody that took the time to watch the documentary we really appreciate it my wife he put in a lot of hard work and hours travel time and all that good stuff so we definitely appreciate y'all for uh looking in it and we like you the comments all that good stuff man Pre- thank you for sharing it all that yeah shout out to my wifey good Aww, job love. thank you if you want to learn more about that just check out our last episode our uh, black lives matter episode i think it was titled promised land how black Pro- farmers lost their land so yes. just check that out and you'll learn more about it and where you can watch it yes and like i said share it if you like it share it there's nothing my thing is when you learn something great what good is it if if you just hold it to yourself absolutely tell her tell everybody Life else is about, about it. loving and sharing mm-hmm. knowledge <laughs> all right okay so what are we talking about today what are we talking about today so i think it's safe to say that one of my favorite um relationship books that we have used <laughs> mm-hmm. while doing this podcast is called 30 lessons for loving okay by carl Pilmer, PhD. Um, again, I'm going back to this book for a third time to mm-hmm. talk about what we're going to talk about today. And um, it is about, well, I guess I'll just give a little background on this book. So if you hadn't heard the previous episodes where we talked about this book, um, the author interviewed the experts on love. Mm-hmm. And the experts were America's, uh, some of America's oldest couples oldest people <laughs> mm-hmm. what was the average of their relationship they like were uh, 43 years that's awesome yes. average of 43 years they were married and yeah. we're getting basically information that they pulled from what it was a hundred 
And no, it was 700. 700 <laughs> couples. Yes, he interviewed uh, more than 700 couples. Average of 43 years in the game. Mm-hmm. So basically, they kind of they, they, they kind of know they kind of know what's up about they know a relationship. Something, something. They know a little something something. Yeah. We've been married <laughs> since 2012. I can understand some people how long you been married? <laughs> well, we only been married for for 8 years, you know, coming up on 8 years. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't tell me I got kids older than you. You know, you can't tell me something. I've been married for 20 years. Hey, hey, it's not about that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just because you may be driving for 10 years, right? And I just started driving. Guess what? There may be some things that I can still tell you about it, right? Absolutely. So for all you individuals out there that feel like you can't learn from from a young whippersnapper, <laughs> what about these older people that have been been in, been in the marriage for on average 43 years 700 couples right you gotta be able to humble yourself and listen to some information and i think uh they they got it yeah i think so too and it's uh, you know i think that's why i like this book so much because every time i start reading i'm like man this is so good this is some really good stuff so you know basically on the final portion of this book he kind of like rounds it up and gives some final lessons from the elders and um basically is talking about how to think like an expert um about love and marriage Mm. all right so think like an expert yes in love and marriage yeah we say in our intro that we're not the experts but you know we keep learning we will be some experts right like, eventually we got to change that <laughs> intro up yeah we're gonna say okay we we did this for a while now we uh but we are experts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so that's that's basically it what we're going to be talking about today some very great um lessons that are were, were hard earned you okay. know through years of experience mm-hmm. from these um elders okay okay so lesson number one number one respect each other respect each other yes that's man come on you know i'm so you know i'm big on the respect yes you know what i'm saying love and respect Mm -hmm. but love is given right you know you're supposed to love each other but you got to know you have to respect each other. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about it, love. So they point out that the reason why this is so important is because when you're married, you're sharing, you're so vulnerable with this person and they see all of the bad and all of the good, all of the good. So when you do something disrespectful to your partner, it is even more uh, hurtful. Right. Right. Because you're so close. Like that's one of the reasons. First of all, we all deserve respect. Right. Right. But this is another reason why, you know, it's just super important because of the closeness that you share. Right. Right. Um, Because, you know, that phrase, the ones that love you, the the one you love the most can hurt you the most or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's because you love them. Right. Like (laughs) they got all the insight and information. Right. (laughs) Um, so I'm just going to read a couple of quotes and it says respect elevates our partner to a position of safety because it involves attitudes that rein in our raw emotions. When we respect others, we focus on their dignity as a person. We hold them in esteem. We even revere them. The elders tell us that such respect must be present to make a marriage last when it goes. Usually the marriage does too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very true. See why I love this book. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Being married, the number one is love, but absolutely, number two is respect. Mm-hmm. That is something that they. Uh, it really should be both should be number one love and respect. Right. Because they go hand in hand. They do. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I, I feel them on that, though. In a marriage, this attitude of respect means allowing your partner to be an individual and not an extension of you. It is important to respect each other. That means valuing the other person's self and contribution to the world. The basic thing is to let the other person be who they are. I've seen people who become very unhappy because the other person doesn't do what they think he or or she should do. However, respect means that I value you and your opinions and your beliefs, even though I may not agree with you. Respect means freedom, not control. Mm, Control. (laughs) I give you the right to be yourself. Mm. That is something that one of the interviewees, who he was 88, summarized that um, opinion. How can you not listen to these people that have been through life, you know, 88 years old mm-hmm. and been in a marriage? We don't know specifically how long he was in the marriage, but like I said, on average, 40 some years. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. You got to listen to them. If you don't, if you don't listen to your elders. It's like you're kind of being foolish a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah. 
So but that paragraph, like that's that's like awesome. You know, like yes, I value that you are a different person and that you have a contribution to this world. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to be like me. We can be different. We're our own people, right. you know. And, you know, that's okay. And so, you know, sometimes I have dated somebody that I didn't respect very much, right? Mm-hmm. But I didn't end up like we just dated, right? And I knew that uh yeah, I I need to respect you or it's not going to um not gonna be very good so why you didn't respect them i i mean there was just multiple reasons just wasn't handling his business that was Mm -hmm. one situation where he just didn't handle his business and i just mean like simple stuff you know just making sure things are paid on time being disciplined you know what i mean i'm i consider myself a very disciplined person so Mm -hmm. that i need you to be disciplined as well or i'm not going to respect you right you know so yeah that was one of them okay Cool, understandable. Pay your stuff, pay your bills on time, <laughs> fellas. I mean, like, because it's not about like, okay, if you're struggling and you just don't have the money, that's, that's one, one thing, thing actually. Right. But if you have the money and you just like not doing it, yeah, you're just, just like letting time fly by you. Yeah, you're not being responsible. Right. You just didn't do it. Right. It's like, you just what are you doing? Reminder. You're watching TV and you didn't do what you, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> the lights just cut off. On. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. <laughs> You got the money and sitting in your bank account. Now you got to pay a late fee. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because ridiculous. you didn't pay the bill. Because yeah. you just didn't pay the bill. Yeah, you, know? you got to step your game up. So, yeah. <laughs> so there's other reasons, but yeah. So, yes, I always kind of knew that this was super important, but I. Well, let me let me, let me me just go back to that real quick. Because mm-hmm. different age groups is going to be, you know, what, 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 what if what if someone is listening to us and they're a teenager, mm-hmm. right? And they're 19. And their boyfriend is 19, not, you know, not paying a cell phone bill on time. What do you say to that 19 year old? I mean, if you really like this person, you can kind of give them a couple of chances, you know, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, you kind of got to sit back and watch and see if they're going to improve themselves or not. But I just some stuff like that. I just no, you need to because you we talked about on the episode that you didn't you broke up with a girl because she was late for work. Yeah. You know? So it's just some stuff. It's just it's just telling of your personality, right? She and it wasn't just one time being late. It was a it was a, it was a pattern, right? Right. So I was like, no, she you, literally got fired because she was late so many times. Yeah, I don't know. I'm what? not late for work. Like I, I'm, what? I'm. <laughs> why would you get fired like that? Like right. I've never been fired, right? And and I'm definitely not going to be fired for being late to work, right? Like that. Just I don't, I don't know. So. Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, that wasn't the sole reason, but that was definitely a, a telltale sign. Yeah. So and then normally it is. It's just multiple reasons why. So I'm just giving you, you know, that one example. But right. so for a younger person, I mean, I don't know. Even at 17 or 19, I still would have been. You still would have been on point. Uh, yeah. I would have been a little irritated by that. But I'd you would kind of give them a little bit more of a pass as you're younger, as you're growing into be something well, those are just one of those things. You just got to be on point. You yeah, some things you just got to be on point with. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like I've been very good at it, kind of expressing my concerns mm-hmm. to people. Mm-hmm. And if I don't really see, you know, you changing, I'm I'm just not about that life. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to like. She'll cut you off nicely. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is just like simple, you know, like yeah. this is simple. I'm not I'm just not trying to. I got other stuff to do, right. basically, right. than to teach you this. So, right. yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, but what do you think? You, you you had anything else to say about that? No, no, no. I I, I think that's uh, it's a very important, and and you know, you want to weed them weed them out as early as you possibly can, basically, just so you can. You, you know, marriage comes with challenges. It's going to come with a lot of challenges, mm-hmm. especially when you have kids and. You know, you know, getting jobs and promotions and pressure of work and it's a lot of other stuff. And, you know, you you kind of want to be on the same page uh, and you want to kind of be able to have all the, the simple things kind of smoothed out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because there's going to be plenty of bumps. We don't need to create all, yeah. more bumps. Right. <laughs> so the thing that I love most about that um, paragraph that I read was respect means freedom, not control. Mm-hmm. I give you the right to be yourself. Because I think a lot of times people do try to control their partner and try to get them to be something that they want them to be. It's like, no, mm-hmm. you just need to see me for who I am. If you don't like it, then you can leave. But, you know, if you, you know, otherwise, then we can be together and you can allow me to be myself. What do you see me as? What do you mean? Like, what do you say? You know, 
you should have you should allow them to be themselves uh you give me the freedom to be myself i give you the freedom to be yourself what do you see me i mean i think we we kind of talked about this a lot with the opposite attract thing you know uh one of the things that we talked about in that episode that was an earlier episode that we did on this podcast and i talked about how jason is mr chatty you know (laughs) and (laughs) and he just she he just chats 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 and um you know he just we can't go anywhere for like a short amount of time because (laughs) Jason is going to talk and ask questions and things like that, you know. And so it's funny to me. It's I, I like don't. To, I like to add value to people's lives. You do, honey. <laughs> but I am very much more like transactional, you know. So I'm cordial, I'm friendly, or whatever. But I'm not. I don't normally just stand there and talk to a person. But it just depends on what it is, right? So, um, so Jason definitely talks to people more than I do. So that's just who Jason is. I can talk and to I, anybody about anything. Absolutely. And I can too. I feel like I can too, but I just, I'm, I normally I'm doing a lot of stuff and I'm just like, okay, let's do this and let's move on so I can go on about my day. Right. So, you know, I mean, this is just one example of you, you, I'm giving you the respect and the freedom to be who you are. So actually I kind of like build in, if I'm planning something, I actually <laughs> build- <laughs> Yeah, I actually build in time for Jason to be able to talk to people because I know that that is what he's going to do. <laughs> and like I said, oh, there's wow. a lot of good things that come from you being such a people's person, you know? Yeah. So even though that's not the way that I am personally, I can, I recognize and respect that that's how you are and it's okay. Like you don't have to be like me. It's, it's fine. Right. right? right. Like you, your own person. And if you want to chat, 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 you know, you can do that. It's fine. I appreciate that love. Yeah, no problem. But me trying to control you. Now, sometimes I do have to, you know, pull it in, wrangle, you know, wrangle you, you know, and say, okay, Jason, that's enough. Like, we got to go. Me, huh? <laughs> yeah, <I'll> wrangle you <laughs> in. <laughs> that's enough. We got to go. We we on the time schedule or whatever. But, like, normally I don't like to do, like, too tight of things. Like, yeah, she gets I already know trippy. He's, yeah, he's, and I'm like, okay, it's time to go. It's time to go. Yeah. So for you, you have to respect that, that that I'm like that. You know, like I give a little, and you got to give a little. I know you want to talk to this person for an hour, but can we compromise? <laughs> and you talk to them for thirty minutes instead of an hour? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how many nuggets she dropping. Yeah, or so, he dropping. Mm-hmm. So yes, so you're saying. I mean, I don't know. Like I see you a lot of different ways. I don't know what you mean by no, 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 you, that's yeah, a good example. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. So uh, the elders also told the author to basically there was three important behaviors to help you show respect to your partner. Mm-hmm. One is uh, pay attention to how you say things. You know, it may sound simple, but, you know, watch your tone of voice. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, just come on you know? <laughs> and um, choose your words wisely. Right? So watch your tone and delivery. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when we talked about this book on a previous episode, we were talking about basically like we're more nice to people that we work with. Right. You know, basically in this uh, chapter, they were saying that, you know, hey, just pretend like you're talking in a job interview if you're having a hard time. Would Mm. you talk? You know <laughs> what? What? How would you speak, and and what words would you use to try to get your point across in a job interview? Right. Uh, you wouldn't say mean things or call somebody out of their name so or wouldn't. anything like that. So again, why do we? Why do we um, speak c- crazy to the people that we love and uh, not to people? You know, random people walking around. So basically, you saying quick tip if you're upset or if you got some misunderstanding with your significant other don't try to get emotional with it but just act like you're in a an interview Mm -hmm. and and just come communicate that way Mm -hmm. as if you're interviewing for this multi-million dollar ceo position yeah just be polite yeah basically right because you're going to be extremely polite right in you're, a nice, job you're nice to your boss that don't give a dang about you <laughs> but then you mean to your to your significant other that that, that cares for you right or suppose they love you right I Abs- feel. absolutely so the next behavior is to um show that you are listening okay show that i'm listening okay talk to me yeah it, it actually respect means that you listen mm-hmm. and show you are listening okay hey put your phone down you know that's true and and i have a, i have a habit of 
playing with my phone because I I think that I'm multitasking Mm -hmm. and I'm listening to you and uh, doing whatever I'm doing. Now, some some task you can do with without you know really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Like 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 for instance, if I'm uh, promoting on Twitter, right? I will. That's easy. I can just copy paste, copy paste, and so it doesn't take too much. I'm not even really reading. I'm just just doing thumb movements. So in that particular situation, I I can get it. But you know, you you can't be looking at it from your perspective all the time. Mm-hmm. You got to look at it from the other person's perspective. They don't know exactly what you're doing, and that may seem like you're not listening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the harm in just putting it down? Yeah, yeah, you got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're talking about something serious, you know. For sure. And in the last episode, not the last episode, but it was titled the uh, the communication method that could help your relationship. Basically, that method is really, I feel like, about listening, right? Yeah. <laughs> so check that out out if you want to learn more. But yeah, listening is just such an important part of communicating, right. right? So how can you really fix a problem if you don't listen? That's like the foundation of communication, right? Is listening, because <laughs> if you don't get the message, you know how can you respond? How can you even act? You got to have the message first. In order, in order to get the message, you have to listen. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the third behavior, uh, respect. Number three. <laughs> no, it's, it's still number one, but it's the it's third. It's the third behavior for to show respect. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Respect means not going to extremes. Okay, talk to me. Again, it's going back to politeness. Yeah. Basically, don't don't drop bombs on people, right? Stop yourself before you make an unkind or impolite remark. The principle of respect means not insulting or belittling the other person. Right. So, um, have you have you dropped some disrespectful bombs on me? I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> don't think Again, so. we've talked about this before too, uh, but you know, it's it's about uh, basically not wanting to hurt your partner right if you say you love somebody why would you say something intentionally to hurt them hurt them right but sometimes you may make a remark and you may not know that it's kind of belittling so jason got we got into an argument one time and you called me woman <laughs> and like woman <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about those sort of <laughs> you didn't it, say that yeah i didn't say that but, but that's how it sounds yeah it was it was Come on now, woman, so, or something. I don't know, but it, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't yes. have said that. Yeah. So for me, that's insulting, right? So right. you would have to tell me because I can't remember if I've said anything like that. But that's like literally the only thing that you said to me. To, and I don't think you did that on purpose, but it definitely was insulting and belittling to me to right. call me woman. Right. So, yes. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta fix your vocabulary. Some people, <laughs> uh, you know have different definitions of of words and terms when they're using them Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying just like you know i don't condone it but just like for for some guys that call women the female dog right Mm -hmm. uh definitely i don't condone it um but some people can say that in a term of endearment Mm -hmm. like that's my b you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and but she may not feel that way way, yeah right so it's just you just got to get an understanding um you know i always like to say if anything that i do will make your eyebrows go up or down just let's have a conversation about it Mm -hmm. because you may or may not gotten the wrong impression of what i'm trying to put out there right right Mm -hmm. so you know just get a confirmation that's all Mm -hmm. yeah i agree so ready for lesson number two number two (laughs) we're moving on the second lesson is to be a team be a team again they dropping the gems right like yeah man because this is since we've been married this is just so important like i feel like this is yeah this is a great lesson to be a team uh one uh, i think it was cheryl sims is a person that he interviewed and she said if you want to stay married you have to learn to compromise mm-hmm because you're two totally different individuals trying to live one life. Sociologists have pointed out that American values promote an individualistic way of thinking and behaving such that individual satisfaction, self-development, and meeting one's own emotional needs are seen as the primary aims of life. Marriage threatens that individualism and asks, in fact, demands that we overcome it. 
Mm-hmm. You can't be an individual. I mean, you are an individual, right? But you have to learn how to work as a team, right? And I think for me, you know, actually playing on a basketball team, right? Yeah, like you learn how to put something um, above like yourself, right. as far as like, no, this is for the team. Mm-hmm. This is we have a goal, right? Right, um, and we do everything for the good of the team right so we all are individuals right. but we do what we do for the good of the team right even y'all goal is to win uh, mm-hmm. but, you know y'all didn't do much of that <laughs> <laughs> y'all didn't do much winning when you was playing basketball but it's okay yeah you know what what so what so what, what, i'm just curious so y- y'all wasn't doing much winning you kind of figured y'all weren't going to state or anything mm-hmm. like that why continue to play basketball because you i mean first of all i enjoyed it mm-hmm. that's first thing and then you know why not why would we give up we just keep we just keep going but y'all every every game y'all taking l's we might win the next game so y'all y'all kind of felt like okay yeah we never went into a game i didn't personally every yeah. game i went into i'm trying to win right okay so whether or not we lose or not <laughs> it don't matter <laughs> i'm trying to win i'm not just out here for nothing now. Oh, okay no 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay because i know when i you know played tennis for the for the school you know we actually went to state and mm-hmm. uh, you know we won stuff you know mm-hmm. so, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the author uh, um interviewed a gentleman that has served in world war ii and he said that taught him a lot about what it means to function as a team so jason and i both were in the military and they do air promote, force yeah, navy who ya uh <laughs> <laughs> um again like especially in the navy like the phrase we're all in the same boat like i think i'm pretty sure that came from the navy or something because we had to learn how to do a lot of different things like i know how to fight fires and things like that because we had to do trainings on fighting fires because we out in the middle of the ocean if a fire break out right now at the door what we're gonna do (sighs) that's we i'm just saying jason i'm just saying i'm trying to firefighter now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you the big time firefighter navy uh, fighter come on come on navy no 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 oh, so you don't know what to do i do know what to do i just don't want to talk about that oh, right okay, now matter of okay. fact so yes we were literally all in the same boat and if a, we're in the middle of the ocean before jason really cut me off <laughs> uh we're in the middle of the ocean and if a fire breaks out we have to band together to do this like yeah. we, we we all need to know and we have to work as a team because you know, listen, if it don't get put out, right, we just all burn it. You know what I mean? Like right. the ship is burning and then we're sinking or something bad is going to happen. So we right. have to we have to work as a team. So I think this showed up in me and Jason's marriage. Um, I, we really, really started to understand the importance of it when we had our fir- first child. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, for sure. We always had the team sort of mentality. But when you have a child, if you don't have that team mentality by that time, uh, it's going to be some problems. <laughs> <laughs> either you gonna either you gonna figure out how to be a team, mm-hmm. or shh, it's gonna be some troubles. Troubles. It is, and so like I said, we already had that team me team mentality. So, and we've all always had like this idea of we base decisions on what's going to help our family as a whole. So mm-hmm. Jason actually. Uh, did not work now jason is an entrepreneur so he always finds a way to make money i work for myself <laughs> he's a hustler <laughs> <laughs> he always finds ways to make money so during that time when I, I was in the navy and they did not have good parental leave at the time maternity leave and um i had to go back to work after six weeks so ooh, ooh. <laughs> yes we knew that I was very young and we actually did not want our baby going to a daycare that young so jason actually decided to stop working or not to work while you know before i I was actually transitioning out of the military which was good so what how long did you stay at home with the baby i don't know i think it was probably about a month or two really yes no i feel like it was not (laughs) it was super longer than that babe she she was there february (laughs) so march you went back to work march april when no, leave? six weeks. So, so February. March. So March. Yeah, end of March, beginning of April. You went back to work, and we left in May. May. Yes. Not you sure, one June. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he felt like it was an eternity. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Nevertheless, Jason did not like that. He did not like staying on Dang. with the baby. But we did what we needed to do. We worked as a team and we got it done. Got okay. It done. And then just even the day to day interactions. Of I was like, cooking breakfast early in the morning too. Yeah, cooking breakfast, changing I'm doing diapers. Some stuff now. Changing diapers, you for, know. For y'all out there, don't think I wasn't doing that. Though. Yeah, you stayed up, you know, you were at home. So you did stay up um then let me get some sleep sometimes yeah you yeah because my wife you know she she got up early in the morning i think you was, was getting up at like four in the morning Man, i had to be at work at like did i have to be work at six or five o'clock in the morning I some crazy i think it was six okay, but, but either way was up early i had to be there at and i six. was cooking breakfast you know what i'm saying <laughs> when she had hot breakfast waiting on her when she got up in the morning George, I mean, <laughs> Jason, <laughs> that was not the case all the time at all. But majority of the time. Uh, you you were going strong for a little minute there, and then you just kind of fell off. So <laughs> <laughs> You got too good of a memory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and then uh, they also were well, speaking about teamwork as being very important um, when troubled times hit. So say a pandemic hits you, right? Yes. Oh my gosh, like teamwork is so important. So as we talked about parents dealing with homeschooling now, teamwork is super important. So I hope that you and your spouse, you know, if you're married, were, you know, hey, figuring out some sort of way for mommy to get some work done and daddy to get some work done. So maybe you keep the kids for an hour and I keep the kids for an hour. Right. And so we can do our phone calls and, you know, we have to make it work. Right. Exactly. So this is just so important in times like this for sure for Teamwork. sure Teamwork for sure. mentality teamwork makes the dream work okay so here was one more quote that i really liked your problem is only our problem that is the way that you're supposed to be thinking about it any mm. difficulty illness or setback experienced by one member of the couple is also the other partner's responsibility i think that you and i have always had this this mentality about yeah it. so um, I'm proud of us. <laughs> Especially, you know, if when it comes to sex and the, and the guy needs to get a release, you know, hey, your problem is oh everybody's problem. So. <laughs> Ladies, make sure you take care of that. Oh, and especially when women are tired because they've been dealing with a lot of stuff. Yes, you know? yes. Your problem is my problem. So yes. go wash some dishes, fellas. See, she always <laughs> wants people to work. <laughs> Dang. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one member of the couple may resist involving the other, wanting to solve it all on his or her own. In so doing, we lose the opportunity to strengthen the and deepen our marriages. I think that's something that men may um, deal with maybe a little bit more than women. What do you think? Like just wanting to solve the problem all by themselves and not open up and let their wife know what's going on. But you actually, according to these experts, are missing an opportunity to grow closer to your partner because you refuse to open up and, um, and you know, get your partner involved in helping you solve some problems. Right. I think think? we just did that. Like, uh, uh, you know, we was talking, Jordan was doing something and typically I would just, you know, whatever discipline and every action, I just kind of come up with it. Mm -hmm. But this particular time, I think it was like last week, I, you know, I asked you, I said, hey, babe, here's the situation. Well, you know, what do you think about it? Mm-hmm. And then you gave your thoughts. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I can rock with that. <laughs> you remember that? Yes, I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That don't, that didn't happen often. Right. Yeah. Good job, honey. <laughs> getting better. Mm-hmm. So did I miss the opportunity? That was, was an opportunity. We, came, we we became closer from that. Yeah. You, you felt that? You felt like we came closer? Mm-hmm. What do you, like, what was your internal thought? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really have an internal thought. I don't think I'm, I was appreciative of you for you know listening to me or yeah, you know, yeah, asking me about my opinion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think you came over and gave me a little little kiss, kissy poo. Did I? No. Oh, because I was like, <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Move right along. <laughs> Rather than a pair of individuals seeking their own interests and fulfillment, the team implies sharing a goal that requires a united effort. Few things are worse than a pervasive sense of loneliness within a marriage. If both partners need to make it on their own, the experts ask, why be married? Why even be together? That's what I'm talking about. I'm just like, excuse me, if we can't support each other, what are we doing? What's the point? (laughs) 
we don't even talk anymore yeah like that's ridiculous like yes it is a sucky feeling to feel lonely within a marriage Mm -hmm. because you're married so you can't go be with anybody else or you're not supposed to right Right. but you're married so you know it's just not it's not cool right so yes i thought i was like amen to that you know that's what people need to be looking for are we going to support each other or what right (laughs) you ready for lesson number three number three make time make time yes what do you mean by that basically life is short so make time for each other yes our most important resource is time and if you are not aware of that you risk squandering your Mm. own precious time is a quote that is from the book so basically it's not you know from the elder standpoint it's not a um a question of having time but you need to be thinking about just making time yeah. you can always make time you may have to let go of some other stuff right but you need to make time for each other so you know when people are always talking about growing apart like we just grew apart mm. i think this is probably what happens they don't make time for each other right you know on a everyday basis right you know? <laughs> or at least like well i mean for me and you we actually make time for each other yeah, every least, single it, day it really, it really needs to be every day if you live with each other you know you do it definitely need to make some time for each other every day mm-hmm. and uh, you know now how long that time is is up to you but you definitely should have at least a conversation where you, you know it might be on the phone it might not be face to face but mm-hmm. at least a conversation saying how was your day or what's your plan for the day? If it's in the morning, you can talk about your plans. Yeah. If it's in the afternoon, you can talk about what you did. Mm-hmm. So at least do that. Yeah, I think so. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I agree. And basically, you know, when the kids come, you have to make more of an effort. You know, you have to be very intentional about making time for each other. But, you know, Jason and I like to we talk to each other all day, basically. <laughs> but um especially when the kids go to bed you know that's just a prime time to talk to people yeah talk to kiss, you, talk kiss and stuff yeah do some other stuff you know <laughs> get your freak on <laughs> <laughs> so you know sometimes you may have to plan it out i forget who that was said that maybe it was Brene brown but she said you have to plan your fun yeah. i don't know if she said that or not some woman said <laughs> yeah. that you need to plan your fun too like you plan everything else make sure you plan your work i mean your fun um and also something to remember that they pointed out in this book is just sometimes don't try to make it all elaborate it don't have to be all of this oh we have to go you know i don't know like just skydiving just every you every day just go walk around the block exactly you that was actually a, a uh recommendation that they made just go go walk around the, the walks block. are dope yes it's actually pretty dope (laughs) because a lot of times you know in this day and age we're not i mean i'm pretty sure people are seeing that now since Mm -hmm. we're in quarantine because people just want to get out the house and just you know maybe walk around yeah a lot of times we see these areas our neighborhood through driving and it's so fast you miss the minor details you miss the flowers that's over here on the corner you miss the the cute little birds that's (laughs) over here you miss the squirrel you know you just miss certain things Mm -hmm. and so when you walking and talking you can man really have a a pretty dope connection you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying so something simple like you said you know just walk and ask about how was your day go for a drive is another example that they gave i like this when the restaurants really start opening back up or when COVID is gone go on wine tasting together Mm -hmm. every few weeks that'll be cool you Mm -hmm. know (laughs) so yes since the quarantine has happened like jason said we've seen it more but he and i just we we did both we went for a drive Mm -hmm. and we went walking Mm -hmm. so watch movie together you know mm-hmm. just simple stuff it doesn't have to be all of this they said if you're trying to do all this elaborate stuff it's a recipe for disaster mm-hmm. because you really don't have the time for all that elaborate stuff if you have children right so let's just you know play a board game and be happy with that right <laughs> during this and and I, we're going to talk about this a little bit later on but you know if you're married and you have and you're looking at the big picture and looking at the long run mm-hmm. you understand that this is just a point in time right in your and i think that is like a really really big you know a big deal for people to understand because people are just so caught up on how they feel in this moment mm-hmm. and of course when jason and i were single we could go do i mean not single but without children we can go do more things together more <laughs> it's freely. almost like you're single you're having kids. <laughs> <laughs> we can 
can go do things more freely, you know. And right. now we can't do things more freely. And I'm the most spontaneous person to to know that anybody knows almost. But you know, so I, I was I loved it. I love doing things spontaneously. Mm-hmm. You know, like I saw a meme on uh, Facebook. They was like, you know, the 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 people that don't have any kids, the relationships that don't have any kids. They'll say, hey, let's wake up tomorrow let's go to africa for mm-hmm. for the week you know yeah they can do that you know what i'm saying like you can just hey i'm, I'm about to be gone for the week and just bam just go mm-hmm. right when you have kids it's a little bit different yeah it's a little different absolutely but you know your kids will grow right yes so just like adjust and figure out what works during this time and understand that you just need to be doing what you can to keep your relationship strong and happy and enjoying your children. And then they will get older and you will get that, that time back again once sure. they leave the house. <laughs> like, right. Or just when they get older, they're teenagers and they can take care of themselves and you can go out and move around a little bit uh, exactly. more easily. So once you're thinking about things in from with the long picture, you know, the long view of how, how do I say that? You know what I'm trying to Wild say? Is. Huh? Zoom out widely. Yeah, exactly. Like I, this is I am going to be with you for the rest of my life, actually, and so right. it's don't, okay. Don't just focus in on the first few years, right? Or it's this okay if pump moment of time. Exactly. Like this is a small moment of time in comparison to the life that we're going to have together. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. And it's just a little, it's just a little time in comparison. Snippet. Yeah, and we're still enjoying ourselves. We should be enjoying raising our children and having fun with our kids. Correct. And that is that's the season. Like we have seasons in life, right? Right. So that is the season that we're in right now. Right. And that seasonal change later on with a little well, bit more. Time. I can't wait till we get to the season of traveling again. <laughs> We travel with our kids, though, Jason. But I'm talking about <laughs> since this pandemic. Oh, uh, yeah. Currently. Yeah. You know. Cause right. Yeah, Jason, me and Jason pick up our kids and go. We pack them up, too. <laughs> Get on down. <laughs> and we would have been somewhere by now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it is what it is, especially for my birthday, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So the author also talks about, you know, a lot of people are like, okay, well, what about times when life is really tough? You know, like right now during the pandemic. Uh, this is the exact time that you should be making time mm-hmm. like you there is just basically is no excuse make time you can just think about some small escapes don't talk about your children talk about something else you know and i don't know what's wrong with me and jason we just talk about everything <laughs> it's nothing wrong we don't have any problem with that we talk about a whole lot of stuff so right. we have not hit that point and hopefully never will well we have nothing to talk about except for our children right so yes <laughs> and some of the experts say that the way to kind of help with this is that you got to disconnect from your electronic devices put your um when you're away from work mm-hmm. and even you know just on a personal level all this social media stuff you know actually couples didn't think they didn't have to deal with this before cell phones and stuff like this mm. is something that we have to deal with you know do what like being distracted by our phones well, yeah but it was distractions with books and radio yeah and, i guess so you know yeah. tv has always been there you know not always but well it's not always <laughs> but you know. so you know it was interesting because jason and i just watched a documentary called uh where to invade next mm-hmm. and we were thinking about we were taught they well i won't go into it but some of these other countries basically have more stricter rules about not uh employers not bothering their employees when they're off work yes and we just have a problem in america that we work too much wait, and work, <laughs> wait, work way too much yeah so maybe one thing that you need to do in order to make time for your family is just have a hard cut off and you know explain to your boss or whoever not to contact me right when right. i get off work I can't remember which country it was that we saw in this documentary, but it's actually against the law. Yeah. <laughs> it's against the law for an employer to contact their employee on vacation or when they're just at home. Like, Correct. no, when I clock out, I'm done. Right. So, and they even had it. They said that uh, their servers will like block them. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? If they try to do it, their servers will like block the employer from contacting an employee when they're off that's pretty dope Mm -hmm. so you know uh we yeah we you know that's a whole nother topic but go check out that document what's the name of again where to invade next where to invade next Mm -hmm. by michael moore Mm -hmm. uh check it out i mean it's just it's it's eye-opening so yeah go check it out yeah absolutely okay lighten up is lesson number four number four yes lighten up man let's have some fun dudes (laughs) 
I'm the that's me. You know, the attitude Ashley is the hardcore lady. <laughs> <laughs> An attitude of lightness, relaxing, embracing humor, forgiving easily is a good stress buster. I am very light, Jason. <laughs> Dang, I am. We I just forgive talked you about easily. The- I embrace humor. I do all of this stuff. But we talked about in the intro. You know, you're you're the serious one. <laughs> but I do know how to have fun though. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, just like just 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 let some stuff go don't major in the minors exactly because actually when i was reading this uh chapter though i thought about you because one of the ways that they say to lighten up is ask yourself marry a a sexy man that's one way for (laughs) sure but (laughs) ask yourself is it worth it are you gonna bring something up is it worth it right yeah so jason leaves the toilet seat up (laughs) i've gotten way better (laughs) I want to say I'm 100%. I'm sure so many women would disagree with me. But after a while, I kind of got tired of after years of being married. Because I talked to you about it at first when we first got married. And you didn't really want to hear it. And you, you know, wanted to make this argument of why, you know, it, it's unfair for the man to be the one to do blah, 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 basically. <laughs> right. And I was like, you know what? I actually don't even care. I know, like, this is something that... <laughs> This is something that you always hear women say that a man is supposed to do is let the toilet seat down. And I'm just like, mm, I don't care. So I'm right. not even going to make, is this worth me fighting with him about it? Cause clearly he wants to debate it. And I'm just like, no, yeah, I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. But yeah. And so by her, you know, not, you know, making a big deal out of it, I guess I eventually, you know, had to sit back and think about it. Like, hmm, she is obviously a, a, a bigger thing than than it is to me. What's the harm of me, you know, taking a point uh, three seconds and just putting the toilet seat down? Mm-hmm. It's not a harm at all. <laughs> so after after, you know, after thinking about it in that way. I started putting the toilet seats down. Yeah. And I'm, I want to say I'm 100% since I started that. I don't know. Have you caught the toilet seat up? Oh, yeah. It I just let it down this morning. Oh, that wasn't me then. <laughs> Clearly, it wasn't me. <laughs> You're the only man in here besides Isaiah, and he's not old enough yeah, for that yet. You just never know why they may, you know, leave <laughs> somebody dirty might put the toilet seat up. Somebody else may want to do it. Well, see, so this part, the reason why I said this reminded me of you, though, actually, is because I feel like this has been my problem with you. Like, I feel like, you know, and I would use the word always, like we've had a discussion about you always bringing up something, you know, Mm -hmm. and I, and I, and I tell you that I let a lot of things go. So I know, uh, I should not have said always because clearly you do let some things go, Mm -hmm. but for a moment there, it just felt like you were pointing out like everything. That's what it felt like. Right. So I know it's not everything, but I think that I have this sort of mentality about like i don't even feel like this is not even that important <laughs> and you do not you know what i'm saying well i do but mm. the, the thing is <laughs> i i see i see more i notice more things you know i was in the air force the great air force and you know we learned to, you know pay attention to details you know and then you know when we're watching movies we're watching films i'm always catching stuff that you don't necessarily catch Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's like i pay attention to more things Mm -hmm. so i see so if i'm if i catch a hundred things but if i only talk about 70 you feel like i'm talking about a lot Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but really i could have talked about the other 30 but i didn't yeah you know so i get it so okay so one of the things that one of the i like this question uh that one of the experts said he said uh ask yourself will winning this argument matter to me when we're 80 you think that's a good question? I mean, nobody. It ain't gonna, shoot, dang. Well, I'm about to say none of these would know. You, you can get in some financial yeah, because, situation. Okay, yeah, exactly. That exactly. Can hinder you. Yeah, and it's not about winning the argument. Really, I would kind of rephrase that, but just if you're trying to figure out, is, does this matter, really? Think about it 80 years from now. Right. Now, one thing that I will say that mattered to me was helping out around the house yes but that mattered to me when i'm 80 oh yes for sure yes absolutely right unless we can get somebody in here to uh, help clean up you know pay for a maid or something hey it's, it, it is the <laughs> point of getting it done and me not being the only person that's doing it right. right so um yes so i was willing to 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 duke it out for that one yeah. right like <laughs> 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 that that one's tough <laughs> yes 80 years from now i will still care about that right <laughs> so, 
Okay, so another way to lighten things up is just understanding that humor helps, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I like that Jason and I, we do, we laugh at ourselves a lot. We just don't take some stuff too seriously. We just, right. you know, whatever, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, life is too short. Like I said, let's just have some fun. Yeah. Do the unexpected is another way to lighten things up. Um, every once in a while, right? Like yeah. you don't have to be trying to think about some spontaneous to do every day of the week, but maybe cause sometimes a routine does make us feel, you know, kind of bored. Right. Mm-hmm. So just do the unexpected, do something different. For sure. Um, and they gave some examples in here. <laughs> One woman, she says she wrapped herself up. Well, <laughs> with a saran wrap and put a bow on her. Yeah. <laughs> she was naked. Hey, <laughs> She did that one time and she said that her and her husband laughed about that for years. And right. I'm like, yeah, I can totally believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that was cute, right? Like, yeah, whatever something. works. You want me to do that, Jason? It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> that don't matter to me. It is what it is. I don't give a dang about the, 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 the bow. Yeah. This was under the bow. Matter <laughs> <laughs> fact, you can say that bow. Yeah, so I think I think you know, it's kind of speaking on these lines of like kinky stuff to do. I guess I think like even something small, like if you're not a person that seeing Jason just showed me this video of this, um, uh, the husband was sending his wife like sexy messages or something, yeah. and she was just like laugh, and he would film her without her knowing that he filming her get his text messages messages so he's filming her reaction so you know i think that's fun i've done that a few times jason oh yeah sent you some some messages and that really made you you know yeah (laughs) getting off early babe (laughs) (laughs) even something like small like that just to shake it up a little bit yeah he seemed like he do that quite often with the with the video that we saw yeah yeah anyways okay uh is this the last lesson oh no lesson five number five Accept your partner as is. Okay. Accept the partner as is. How are we going to do that? Well, kind of what we were talking about earlier. (laughs) Like, I accept that you're chatty, you know? (laughs) Right. Um, But, yeah. Um, So, there, but their key point about this, he talked to some people who, some grandparents who were raising their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, like, all of those grandparents felt like their child had made a bad decision um, in picking their partner and you know they basically suffered a lot and as a result so you know they suffered so much that they weren't able to keep their children so now the grandparents are keeping them and so as he was er- interviewing these um, grandparents who who are keeping their grandchildren <laughs> taking mm-hmm. care of them um, basically asked them how do you think that you know your children could have avoided picking the wrong partner basically or here's the question how can people avoid having major regrets about choosing a partner Mm -hmm. and they agreed on this answer (laughs) don't go into a marriage or any committed relationship thinking you're going to change the other person Mm -hmm. so again that's why it's important to take your time selecting someone and everyone no one is perfect right everyone has their things but you have to decide if what their thing is is something that you can deal with or you know accept you know so um yeah i mean yes i i can't really accept someone who um makes like really horrible financial decisions i'm sorry right Right. like we talked about this in another episode about you know the way that i grew up without a lot of money Mm. so that's really important to me now some other people don't mind like helping their partner along and not saying that jason and i haven't had to help each other in different ways with this financial situation but I i that i don't i i can't a gamble like that that's one of those things that i'm just like no (laughs) i can't be responsible for trying to help you with that and so basically they're saying like you know don't try to change your partner like not you can't you can't change them it's something that they have to want to do right so if you go in trying to change them you're definitely going to be um very disappointed (laughs) (laughs) Getting married based on a plan to change your partner is a terrible mistake. So some people plan, like they see the problem, but they're like, I can fix that. Right. Kind of like, I always go back to this example because it's just so, uh, 
it just just I just don't understand it that Jason loves to travel so much, but he was with someone and seriously committed to someone who doesn't like to travel. So he just thought that he can change it. Like, right. oh, she just don't know any better. Yeah, I'm put on game. Yeah, I can change it. Now, maybe that would have worked and maybe it wouldn't have. Now, if that would not have worked, how would you have felt? Yeah, that would have been rough. Because you, know? you just love to travel so much. Yeah, yeah, it would have been rough. How do you, you know, I mean, you don't have to think about it now because. I think we, would, we probably wouldn't have been together. See? Yeah. But you had a plan to change her yeah i just knew that when <laughs> she you know go on a trip you know it's just gonna be like oh my god i didn't know i just oh my god this is awesome mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i just thought automatically that's what that's what's gonna happen mm -hmm. yeah yeah so if it didn't happen then yeah there would have been there would have been some problems yeah so this is this is the basis of accepting a person for who they are and um yeah now he did mention in this chapter too that he was like, you know, some of you may be reading this and thinking, but married people do, in fact, change, don't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. And he said the experts affirm, yes, indeed, they do. It's important to be clear that the issue is not whether a person can change in marriage. Rather, the point is that you cannot change your partner. Mm. Instead, your mate must want to make a change and carry it out independently. You may support your partner in an attempt to make a change and you may change together. Mm -hmm. but that's misguided but what's misguided is the idea that you can push your husband or wife to change in the direction that you have chosen again they are an individual right right <laughs> and you just cannot make them change exactly basically that's what it come down to <laughs> okay last lesson last lesson last as long as you both shall live so this is talking specifically to the married people okay okay the decision to make a commitment to one single per person for a lifetime is the commitment, right? Right. Like the experts tell us that you must enter into a marriage believing it will last forever. And they also reveal that the outcome is worth striving for. So basically you can't go into marriage just like, oh, if this doesn't work out, I'll just get a divorce. You right. know, right. you shouldn't. Right. Right. Uh, now, of course, you we're not saying that divorce divorce is never like an option right because clearly if a person is being emotionally or physically abused that's a problem right, right? but basically the elders were saying anything outside of that like just try your best <laughs> to make it work you know right and so that is just like this importance of understanding that and both of, the, of you having that same sort of commitment level coming into it mm -hmm. is um better so as I was saying before about like if you're looking at things from a big picture and you have this commitment to be with this person for the rest of your life. And I think it definitely does make you, you know, have to deal with whatever it is that is uh, bothering or plaguing your relationship right now. Right. Like it's kind of like. I don't know, like, I'm not saying you're like my brother or anything, but just like this idea that my brother will always be my brother. Right. So you will always be my husband. Right. And so that means that, like, if something is a problem, then we need to fix it because I'm not going anywhere and you're not going anywhere. Like, right. <laughs> she holds me house, you all <laughs> So we need to fix it. Correct. The same way you would do with a family member. You are my family. So it's the same thing. Right. Basically. What do you think? I love it. Love I it. like it. I love it. I want some more of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got all genres. So I really like this quote. Um, so it's actually like more so better described as a discipline. Mm -hmm. As one writer puts it, it's a developmental path where you get better at something by mindfully attending to it and by continual practice. Most important, it is a lifelong process. You don't arrive at success, but rather you spend your life mastering the discipline. Mm. So like to really be kind of like this other book that we read called The Art of Loving, mm -hmm. where he was saying that like it has to be, you know, of the utmost importance. You have to learn it. You have to study it. And then you have to practice it. Right. right. And we'll become masters at this discipline of love <laughs> only after a lifelong you know, stay with it, right? Right, right? So these people that's been married a long time basically felt like that's very true. Okay. <laughs> well, shout out to y'all, man. Appreciate y'all for dropping these nuggets. <laughs>
appreciate you for researching these nuggets no, so we can don't. drop it on a podcast and appreciate y'all for listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that I wanted to mention was another quote that says, there are some life experiences for which you need the whole thing to reap the benefits. The, and marriage is one of those. Oh, wow. Okay. So lastly, basically what, you know, this whole section just wrap this up is, Taking the long view when marriage is seen as a lifelong opportunity for growth, problems become vehicles for new insights and a deeper relationship. So we're all growing. We're all on this journey uh, called life. And your partner is the one that's going down that journey with you. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's it. Cool. Well, I hope you guys got some nuggets out of that, out of this. We're going to do a live discussion on Wednesdays, as you already know. Uh, we do it every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be on Facebook Live where we give away things. You've got to answer the question correctly. So if you listen to this, make sure you list, You actually listen because I'm going to have ask a question from this episode and we're going to try to give away some stuff from, from spinning the wheel. Also, if you want to become a Patreon, we appreciate all our Patreons. Uh, go to loveologypodcast.com, find that Patreon button, pick a tier, and join us. And if you got questions or couples, man, um, you know, let's say you want to, you know, want you, you and your hubby or you and your wife or you and your boyfriend want to come on the Love Ology Podcast show, uh, we're open. So just go ahead and shoot us an email. Go to loveologypodcast at gmail.com. Anything else, love? Enjoy the journey. <laughs> Enjoy the journey. <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's enough for today. And we're going to catch y'all next time. So, again, enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, keep your head up and be easy. Peace out. Bye. You've been listening to the Loveology Podcast. Did you have fun with us today? Tell a friend about our show. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep the conversation going. Be sure to subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Visit us at loveologypodcast.com. Thanks for listening. Until next time, loveologists.